Welcome to Lise Marie's Cooking Live. Tomorrow on live, I will be featuring Korean bulgogi fusion tacos. And they are going to be delicious, but there's a little prep work that we will need to do first. And I wanted to share that with you. So take a look at what I'm doing here in my kitchen. So nice to have you joining me. The first thing we're gonna do is a little pickling. Um, if you go to the site, you'll see that I feature, featured a pickled radish, and we're gonna use that when we make the bulgogi. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to cut our radishes. Um, in this pot, I have half a cup of water, half a cup of vinegar, and I'm gonna add half a cup of sugar, um, a pinch of salt. We're gonna boil that, and after we bring it to a boil, we have a mason jar. We're gonna put our radishes in this mason jar. Just do a little pickling and we'll store that in the fridge. It'll be perfect for tomorrow. But real quick, what we're gonna do is just slice our radishes. We just wanna have, you know, not super, super thin, um, not super fat, but uh, just a nice size. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing. That's how thin the radish is. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's okay if it's not perfect. We're gonna put these in the jar. Just make sure you don't cut your fingers. They're oddly shaped sometimes. But I don't know if you've ever had bulgogi before, but you can serve it on rice. You can serve it by itself, plain. You can put it in lettuce, and you can also put it in uh, flour tortilla. And I may, and I'm just not sure about that, I haven't decided yet, I may just make some tortillas. So we'll see. This one wasn't as thin as I like it. And if you've never tasted a radish before, you should taste it. They are delicious. Perfect in salads, too. Today, it has been cold. I had to make a U-turn and come back and get a jacket because it was cold outside. What made it colder than what it was was the wind. The wind was blowing like crazy. So we only need about a half a cup. Let's see what we have here. We're gonna do half a cup of radishes. Here we go. Just gonna put that in the jar and it's nice, it's ready for my pickling. I'll just put this, well you know what? I'll just put this one in, it won't hurt. Have a little bit more radish. These are good too, pickled. Voila, there we go. Just a little extra, we'll put this in here. Move this out of the way. I wanna add half a cup of sugar to this. So it's half a cup of water, half a cup of white vinegar, and half a cup of sugar. And we are going to just bring this to a boil. Now let me get some salt. You want to do a pinch of salt as well. All right. Now let's work on our marinade for our bulgogi. Food. Fusion food is amazing because it's when cultures get together and or when people who love the food and the way it tastes in different cultures combine those flavors together and they become like a fusion. So they're great. I'm excited about the fusion. So what we're going to do is we need to cut our um, Asian pear. This is an Asian pear. Look at that. <laughs> what we're going to do is we want to peel this. So 
Um, you can just use a peeler. I like to use my uh, it's a peeler I use for my carrots. You just put it on the side of the fruit like this and you press in a little bit to the fruit when you move it and it'll peel really easily for you. Yeah, we don't want the skin, we just want the juice. Actually, this pear, and you could use, I wanna say you could use almost any fruit, like even apples, um, have like what you, what you would, I would say sort of like, uh, and we only need about, um, as far as pear, we just need one of these. It's gonna add that little sweetness to our bulgogi. Let's get the other one peeled. And then once we peel this, we're going to take the um, seeds out of it. And we are going to use this grater. Let's put this on the side, dump this out. Okay. Well, I just sliced it in half like this. And then if you just do like an angle right here, you can get the core out so you're not left with any seeds. You do that with your apples too. Easy snacking. We just don't want the seeds. You know with fruit, believe it or not, you can eat the entire fruit. You don't really have to throw any of it away. I read that one time. And I think the seeds in, inside of an apple is some form of like uh, opium or something. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, what we're going to do is I want to use, because I'm really creating, like, I want to just get most of the juice. So you see this side of your grater? If you have that on your grater, great. We're in business. So we're just going to grate this. Um, you can also put this in a food processor if you want to. You can achieve the same results. And it's going to give us a lot of really good, yummy, delicious juice. Just got to watch your fingers on here. You don't want to grate up your fingers. <laughs> and we're going to do... And I'm putting it in this bowl because we're going to use this bowl for our marinade. If this was bigger, sometimes these pears are much bigger even than what I have. But this one's not that big. This is sort of like a medium size. It seems like it is big, but it's really not that big. I think I'm going to save just a piece so I can eat it. Mmm, so good. Okay. We have our pear. Okay, so here we have the juice of basically one Asian pear. Um, and for our marinade, I have everything ready so we can go as quickly as possible. Um, and let me stir this up a little bit. This is our pickling liquid. It's fun to pickle things. Especially when you do it yourself. And we just want this to come to a boil. Alright, 
So into our marinade, we want to add our soy sauce. So we're going to use four tablespoons of soy sauce. We're also going to use uh, two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to grab the sugar. This is like a Korean barbecue. So this is going to be very, very good. Um, also, what we will add is, if you don't have the plum sauce, you can use the honey or molasses. But I do have some plum sauce. Um, this is basically what it looks like. It's a plum sauce. <laughs> so I have some plum sauce. We're going to put that in here. Grab a spoon so I can get all of that out of here. All right. Um, then also what we'll do is have some ginger. So um, I've minced some ginger a little bit already. What I'm going to do is put the ginger in here. The ginger is going to add a nice spicy flavor to it as well. Um, then you will definitely need to make sure that you have um, some sesame oil. But we're going to do the sesame oil last. We're going to add the onions. The green onions, the carrots, and some garlic. So I've got four cloves of garlic here. Some thinly sliced onions. I'll show you what that looks like. Thinly sliced onions. You need about half a cup. I have just a little bit more than half a cup. Uh, then you need some green onions. These are thinly sliced as well. Put that in here. I'm telling you already, this is smelling so good. Just really good. And then we'll add our, um, let's add a little our red pepper flakes. We only need about um, a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Um, and then also we want to make sure we put a little black pepper in here as well. So we're going to use about a a teaspoon. We're not using any um, salt because the soy sauce is pretty salty and I do also want to add some uh, sesame seeds. So let me grab some sesame seeds right quick. And these are toasted sesame seeds. We only need about a teaspoon of this. Just cup your hands, approximately a teaspoon. And then let's just mix our marinade up. This is our marinade. Our beef is gonna go in this. And I wanna show you also what I've done with the, um, with the beef. Okay, I'm gonna put my sesame oil in here. That's one teaspoon of sesame oil. Oops, lost that cup. Here we go. Ooh, it smells good. Mm. We'll add half cup of carrots. And the carrots also, I just thinly slice the carrots. You can use a mandolin if you want to. I did not use a mandolin. I just took my time and sliced them. So this is our marinade. Put that on the side. Now let me show you what I'm doing with the beef. I did a um, whole tenderloin. I bought a whole tenderloin and um, I actually used, uh, when I, whenever I buy a whole tenderloin, what I do is I cut it up and divide it. So the tail end of it and the head of the tenderloin, I kind of like take those off. So you're left nothing but with the Chateaubriand in the middle. Um, and sometimes I'll leave the chain that's on it as well, but this, this is basically what I had in my freezer from a, um, a beef tenderloin, and I decided that I was just going to use that because you want to use a really good cut of meat. Um, so to cut it, what you want to do is have thin slices, see, 
Um, and you, what you can do is, this is a little meat cleaver, but what you can do is freeze it so it'll cut easier when you take it out of the freezer, but maybe put it in the freezer for about an hour to stiffen it up a little bit and that it'll make it easier to cut. So I'm just going to cut this, the remaining. I just want to show you, I am cutting it kind of thin. Doesn't have to be perfect cuts, but thin cuts. That's what you want. And then once we slice all of our beef thin, you can have the butcher do this as well. What we want to do is we want to dry it out. So you can use paper towels to do this. Um, this is a couple pounds, maybe just a little bit more than a couple pounds. I have a towel. I'm just going to press it because you want to get all of the excess moisture out of it. You really want your marinade to stick to your beef. So that's why we're doing this. Get the other side. Okay, and then I will get this other side. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to dump our meat. I've got a bag. Just a little handy um, gallon size plastic bag. So I want to put my, I was going to put my marinade first, but I'm going to put my beef in first. Okay. Now we're going to add our marinade in. I want to get all of this. We don't want to leave any of this behind. Okay. Leave a little air in your bag, just a little bit. So when you toss it around, you have some room to toss it around. You want to make sure that the meat is well coated in the marinade. You want to incorporate everything really well. Just kind of let this bag be your mixing bowl. And this is it. So I'll let the air out the bag now. And whenever you're pickling, you want to make sure that your jars are really clean. So this, I had it on a low fire. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't have any mishaps with that. So I'm going to move this. This is going to go in the refrigerator. Get a quick little hand wash. Okay, it's boiling. So we'll just turn that off. We have our radishes in our mason jar. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use a funnel. I wanna make sure that it does get here in my jar and not all over the countertop and all over my hands. Voila, and we are ready. So this is a lid. Mason jars come with that nice little lid and this will help to seal it really nicely. So we are going to screw it on tightly and turn it upside down. Voila, that's it. So we are ready. That's how you get your marinade ready for your Korean Bulgogi Fusion Tacos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. See you tomorrow. Bye.